Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Rob Willis.info here, and in this video I want to give a quick demonstration exploiting one of the newest vulnerabilities available for Apache struts, and that's going to be CVE 2017-9805. I'm also going to do a blog post to go along with this video, and there you'll find all the commands that I use in the video along with additional information, um, some stuff for detecting the attack and analyzing it, along with packet captures and all that kind of stuff, um, but you'll find links to that all down below. Alright, so let me tell you a little bit about how I set this up here. Uh, so I have two virtual machines, one of them is running Ubuntu 16.04.2, and that's going to be my Apache Struts machine, or the target. And then the other one is running Kali Linux, and then I'm going to be using that as my attacker machine. So uh, let's take a quick look at the uh, Struts machine first. Now the machines are going to both be on the same network, um, but the attack will work the same way as if you were doing it over the internet. Um, but instead of using IPs, you would be using DNS most likely. Um, so logging into the server, you see that I've already went ahead and installed Tomcat 8. And I'm just verifying that it actually is up and running, and it is. And then I'm going to do a quick net stat and verify that it's listening on the port that I'm expecting it to be listening on, which should be 8080 in this case. And it is listening. And I'm just going to clear the screen real quick here. And then the last thing I want to do is run an IF config and get the IP address of the server. And you'll see that it shows here that on the, uh, the ENS160 adapter, my IP address is going to be 192.168.2.211. So just remember that the machine I'm targeting is going to be the .211 address. Um, because you're going to see that address referenced a lot as I move through the exploit and stuff here. And um, so yeah, just make sure you remember that the 211 is going to be the target machine. And then it's also worth noting, let's go back to the, uh, the Kali machine real quick. And because um, you're going to see this IP address used a lot as well. And I'm just going to pull up a terminal real quick and IF config. And you'll see that this one's IP address is going to be 192.168.2.79. So when you see that IP address referenced in commands, you're going to know that the dot .79 is the attacking machine and the dot .211 is the target machine. All right, so let's take a quick look at the uh, Tomcat uh, manager. And we can do that by browsing to the IP address of our target server, or the strut server, which is going to be that 192.168.2.211, specifying the port 8080, and then going to slash manager slash HTML. And uh, this is where you'll go to manage the Tomcat instance. You can deploy new applications, you can remove apps, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this is the first part to, uh, to getting this um, exploit to run. So first we need to get Tomcat running, and then you need to deploy an Apache Struts application on top of that Tomcat instance. So next we need to go and download the Struts framework. And uh, I'm just going to download the 2.5 all, um, but this exploit should work for 2.5 to 2.5.12. And then lastly, we're going to get the exploit itself. And I'm just going to grab it off of exploit DB. Uh, it's a Python-based script. Um, you see basically all it's going to do is do a post request against the, uh, the target server with uh, a command that we want and a specially formed XML request. Um, so I also downloaded that already, and it should be good to go on my local Kali machine. Um, so going back to the, uh, the Tomcat application manager, though, let's take a look at this real quick. So you see that it says war file to deploy. So that's what the Apache Struts application is going to be. It's going to be a .war. So I'm going to browse, and I've already downloaded it locally and unzipped it. But I'm just going to browse to the directory. And it's going to be underneath the apps directory. And the struts rest showcase, or struts2 rest showcase.war is the file that we want to use. Um, but I've already uploaded it, so I'm not going to go and do that now. But you'll see that it actually ends up showing up here. And if you click on the link, it will actually take you to the application. And you'll see that it has a list of orders here. And uh, if we go ahead and click view on one of these orders, you'll notice that the, uh, the URL at the top there is actually the same one that's referenced in the, uh, the exploit itself. And if I just scroll down here, and you'll see that, yeah, so it actually <coughs> was re referenced as the example in the exploit. So just to keep things simple, I'll use the same one in my demo here. Um, but you should be able to use any of the other orders here, because they're still under the same application. Um, so that's it. So uh, basically we, now we have our uh, vulnerable application deployed, we have our exploit downloaded, and we're ready to go. So now I need to test the exploit and see if it actually works against my vulnerable server. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a few terminal windows here. And you'll notice on the one on the top I've already CD'd into my downloads folder. And uh, I've already downloaded that exploit DB exploit. And uh, so that should be good to go there. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear that. And then in this bottom right one here, I'm going to actually SSH into my struts host. And normally you wouldn't be able to see the uh, or SSH into the host that you're attacking. But in this case, since we control it, I can. And the thing I want to do is I want to pull up the Tomcat logs and see what it records as I'm attacking it. 
and it should just be this last log here. So I'm just going to tail dash F on that localhost access log for today, and that should be it. All right, and I'm just going to grab my command that I've saved off to the side here now, and uh, I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. And you'll see that I'm basically just going to run Python and call the uh, Python script that I downloaded from ExploitDB. And I'm going to point it to the uh, the first argument is going to be the uh, the target website or from the uh, the actual URL that we found earlier, um, this one here. And like I said, you can use uh, any of the order IDs. It should work against because it's all the same application. So we're going to go with the order number three. Um, and you'll see here that on the, uh, the exploit itself, it actually tells you the, uh, the arguments that you need to actually run the exploit. So we need the, uh, the website that we're going to target and then the command to follow. So what I'm going to do here is the last one is going to be the command that I want to run or have the server run for me. And I'm going to do a wget and I'm going to do it back to my Kali machine. That's the IP address of the, the Kali machine that I'm attacking from and to a fake.php. Now fake.php doesn't have to actually exist. I'm just looking to see if it actually runs the command and makes a connection back to my Kali machine. Because with this particular vulnerability, you won't actually see output in the error page or in the response that the server has. So like if I do something like ID, I won't actually see the response of it so this way I can at least see that the server did something by verifying that it connected back to my Kali machine and I'm just going to run a quick net stat to see if I have anything listening on port 80 on my Kali machine and I don't um, so at this point I could start Apache and then see if it hit the uh, my Apache server through the, uh, the Apache logs or I could just do something simple like run netcat on port 80 so that's what I'll do here and I'll just do it NC dash NVLP and run it on port 80 so again, I'm just going to run Python, the Python script, and then the first argument is going to be the target URL, and then the last argument is going to be the commands that we want to run, and that's going to be the wget back to the Kali machine. And we see that it does actually run the command, so we see an HTTP request from the uh, to the Kali machine from the struts machine at the dot .211, and it was requesting the fake.php. And if we take a quick look at the lo the Tomcat logs on the struts machine, we'll see that it actually recorded that the uh, the dot seventy nine made a post request that returned an internal five hundred error against that Apache struts application. And I'm just going to do a super quick edit here. I realized after I shot the video that I didn't actually show very much output of the uh, the exploit Python script. And, uh, and I wanted to show a little bit more of that so you know what to expect. Um, but basically, whether it runs successfully or not, you can expect to see a similar error to this, which is just going to be a, a stack trace of an internal 500 error. Um, but yeah, like so basically, whether the command runs or not, you're going to or whether it's successful or not, you're going to see this error from what I've seen. And um, with this particular application, there is no uh, response from the command that you ran to be observed in this response. And that's just going to be a regular HTTP response. Um, but let's go back to the, uh, the application and let's try and generate a few more logs so I can show you how this attack kind of stands out in your, uh, your Tomcat logs and how you can detect it or kind of start to detect it or get an idea of things you should look into more through your, uh, your Tomcat logs. So I'm just going to hit the, uh, the base URL and then go back to the application. And you see it generated a few more requests. Um, but see, the normal requests were just get requests against that application and return 200 OKs. But when we did the attack, it was actually a post request and it returned an internal 500 error. And also the size of the request was a lot larger than the other requests. So this is one way you can kind of start looking at your web application logs and get an idea if these kind of things are going on. And if there's some things you should look into a little bit more. All right, so now that we know we can get the remote machine to run commands for us and the application is vulnerable, let's see if we can take things a step further and get a reverse shell back from that machine to get further control of it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a reverse shell payload and I'm going to use MSF Venom and I'm going to do a payload of Linux x86 shell reverse TCP. Now you can swap that out with a interpreter shell or anything like that. I'm just trying to keep it simple here. I'm going to do a format of ELF for the local host. It's going to connect back to my, uh, my Kali machine. So I'm going to use the dot .79 IP address. And I'm going to do a port 443 uh, just to keep things simple. And I'm going to output the file to var www.html. And the file is going to be named rev underscore shell. And I'm just going to give that a second to finish up here. So this is going to create an executable file that when run on the target machine connects back to the attacker machine with a shell of the remote machine so that you can control it. Um, so it looks like the file is completed, so I'm just going to go ahead and cd to var www.html and verify that it's there, and it does actually exist. Um, and this is actually Apache's default directory, so at this point I'm going to go ahead and start Apache, and then this way we'll be able to um, run the commands on the remote machine to download this file and then execute it, and, and it'll connect back to the attacking machine. 
All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste my command in here, but it's basically the same thing I did before. I've got Python, and then I'm specifying the Python exploit DB script that I had from earlier. Um, the same target URL. The main thing that changed this time is going to be the command section. Um, and the big thing too is that you'll notice I have these and number 38s in there, and those are just and ands. Um, but I had to use them. I had to use the uh, XML encoded versions so that they don't get parsed out. Um, but you'll see that I'm CDing to dev shm, which is shared memory, which is just a writable directory. You could really use any writable directory there, but it has to be writable by, in this case, it's going to be Tomcat, because that's who's going to be executing these commands. Um, and then I just w get my reverse shell from my attacking machine. And like I said, I staged it in Apache, so it's just going to do a HTTP request to get that file down there. And then it's going to chmod and mark it as executable. And then after that, it's going to go ahead and run the file. And then that it should, at that point, connect back to my Kali machine. The hardest part about this is the commands have to be strung together like this because you can't run them individually, and you also won't see any output from them. Um, so when the reverse shell runs, I'm also going to have to catch it on the way back. So I'm going to set up a netcat listener, which is nc-nvlp on 443, to catch that reverse shell on the way back. And uh, that'll work because this is a basic non-stage non shell. Um, so that should be it, and uh, so I should be good to go, and I'm just going to go ahead and run the command now. Oh, and I'm in the wrong directory, uh, because I changed to Apache's directory. So I'll just cd uh, back to my downloads directory, and then go ahead and run the command again. Okay, and here we go again. And we see that it generates that stack trace again, and it looks like it connected back to our machine. And we notice that there's no output like the last one where we saw the actual HTTP request and all that. Um, but we see the, the post request on the, uh, the Tomcat logs on the bottom right there. Same thing, post internal 500. So on my Kali machine, I'm just going to pull up the uh, Apache web logs real quick just to see what the, uh, the, um, the target machine requested from my attacking machine and we see that it did actually get do a get request for the reverse shell or the rev shell that I had staged so it uh, looks like we should be good so I'm gonna go ahead and type ID and we see that it returns Tomcat and it looks like it actually the commands are actually working so we actually did get a successful reverse shell back to the Kali machine and I can IF config and I can basically run any commands that I want at this point so sweet. At this point, I've got an interactive command line of the remote target machine. I basically have control over it. Um, I am running as a limited user or a, a non-privileged account, so I'm, I'll need to work towards privilege escalation and getting towards root. Um, but I mean, at this point, once I can run commands directly against the machine and interact with it, it's only a matter of time. And plus, the uh, Tomcat user can actually read a lot of the files that are uh, potentially interesting, and there should be a good bit of stuff to keep me busy and potentially be useful to exfil off of the machine. So as you can see, it really wasn't that hard to take control of this server using this exploit. So you should definitely figure out if you are running this software and if you are get it patched as soon as possible because this is definitely a critical vulnerability. And I think that's where I'm going to wrap this one up. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned a thing or two. And as always, thanks for watching.